Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome back to the to the Revelator cast. Well, favorite all guests me. Ryan, who's your all favorite guest? It is this guest right here, and that is Terry Gender Bender from Le Butcheress. How are you, Terry? Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm great, Ryan. Right? I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm nervous like always, you know, nervous now because I'm learning to breathe. And and and, and I'm thank thank you. Uh, you, you know, it's uh, it's funny. You you always say that you're always nervous, and I, I'm I used to be really nervous. We we've been able to uh, have some really really great conversations about music life. Um, you know, your background, family, my family. We, we've been able to just kind of the shed that. It's funny. I, I was going back through some of our earlier interviews, and I'm just happy that you're feeling good because like the last two times I believe you were actually <laughs> sick um, during our, during our interviews, and I always joke with people. I was like, most people don't get sick until after the interview's over. You know, so. Yeah, <laughs> but what do you mean? Like they get sick? Do they get they they oh because they get uh because you, you're overdosed with the with the uh, with germs? Yeah, what it is? You know, I'm not sure. Maybe yeah. my interviews just make people <laughs> ill. I'm not sure. Right? It's the the, the jury's them. still out on that. Yeah, apparently, you gotta share them. <laughs> we gotta we gotta we gotta we gotta connect everyone to them sick. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. But you know, well, but now um, fortunately enough, my immune system has been way better. Um, you know, just what 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 what, what, what wonders little vitamins and just what a little change of diet to your like taking sugar out for example, like the little things can just do wonders and, yes. and make you feel uh, less fatigued and and um, and also you know what you just you know, just trying to get some more sleep. Sometimes that's hard too. I mean, I don't know how how do you sleep sometimes. You know, uh, uh, for, for me, uh, sugar. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned sugar because that is uh, that is one of the the biggest things. If you can eliminate it from your diet, mm-hmm. it's amazing what will happen to totally. you. Your, one, your body, and just your overall mental state. It's absolutely crazy. Caffeine is another one. Um, I'm a, I'm a coffee oh, junkie, so and I struggle um, daily with limiting my ca- my caffeine intake. Um, oh, so and we've talked here. about this quite a bit as far as you know just changing your style and habits and eating and those type of things. Um, I had a fantastic salad, actually, earlier for lunch today. It was really good. But, um, but yeah, no, uh, I, I wanted to, to mention this. Um, I know last, I think, you know, you've been on the show a couple times, and I wanted to tell you that Dale from the Melvin says hello, by the way. Um, I actually had a chance oh, to, to, ca- to catch up with him this summer. So Dale from the Melvin says hello, by the way, and says his well wishes oh, to you. I love him. He's a sweet, sweet man. Such a and him and his family, oh, I miss them all. That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, so uh, we had a we had a nice kind of conversation uh, about you, and he was like, "Well, he's like, if you see her, you know, tell her I said hello." And so I'm passing the uh, the, the positive vibes on from from Dale to you. But uh, Terry, there, there's a lot to, to speak with about you, you know, kind of planned and unplanned, really. And I guess we'll start. You guys are on uh, a tour right now with the Flaming Lips, kind of wrapping up that tour, kind of towards the back end of that leg. Now, um, you guys are no, heading out of, out of Brooklyn on the road. I, yeah, I, I'm yeah, sure you've had a blast on on this tour. Um, why? Why does it have to? No, these guys are so awesome to be around with, you know, and just to, and and of course, you know, with that being said, we try to stay out of the way as much as possible, and 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 with all that on top, the the band and the crew, they still make time to come out, uh, you know, come to the room and say hello, or vice versa. They even help us do our changeover, and they and 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 the and the lips take the time to watch her set before they go on. So it's really freaking cool, you know? We're just sad that it's almost over, like you think. Well, that's really cool to, to hear those guys are engaging and, and acting, you know, with you. And I think anyone that doesn't know a lot about your band, when they see your band live, they're instantly hooked because you guys are so intense and you're just such, uh, wow. there's such magnetism with you on stage. And that's one of the things I was always... I adore about you. I'm a, there's many things I adore about you, but you. your live performance Thank and your uh, ability vocally and, and to paint pictures with words is, is definitely at the top of the list. But um, how are how are so crowds taking you in? Because I mean, you're playing with the Flaming Lips. You have another tour you just announced with Death from Above, 1979. Those guys you know, yeah. doing kind of like a back of the, the year tour you guys are going to be on with. How are the new crowds... Um, you know, playing in front of different audiences, maybe that you're accustomed to. How are how are audiences taking you in uh, as, as a group? Oh my goodness! Sometimes I just assume that 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 um, I assume the worst, <laughs> so I'm always kind of a very defensive uh, in, in the in the sense where where I'm, I feel like I'm going I'm going to do do I don't want to say war because that's probably a very big exaggeration. But in a metaphorical sense, that's what it feels like. Like it's the end of something. 
so it's kind of or jumping out of a plane it kind of feels very terrifying so i'm i'm blinded by all that emotion that i just kind of i just look for faces i just try to look into people's eyes so i can just try to humanize with them and remind them that hey we're in this together motherfucker i mean excuse my language but we're in this together we're, we are in <laughs> no, this no, together can't. okay this is a two-way street and and so sometimes i feel that that as long as you know they they return the stare and we we lock eyes even if it's for a little second i'm just happy with that because sometimes it has happened before where people are just, are just on their phones and they don't even look up and that is that feels in a way um i don't know it just feels really really sad you know you're you're expressing your your every fiber of your being with your best friends up on there and then someone's just too busy even though they made the time to go out out of the house but to be on their phone and on a show Weird. I don't know. What do you think of that? I mean, I, I understand yeah. if you know you're, you're there to work and, and to promote the event, but I don't know. I guess there's ways to do it. What do you think? Uh, for for me, it's a little different because uh, you know I, I'm at a show, so I'm doing photography. So, but it, when I'm done with photography for the evening, I don't look look at my phone at all. Like I, I'm, I guess I'm a rare bird in that case. But um, for me, I remember you know seeing you guys live in Nashville. Gosh, I, over three years ago now, which is crazy, crazy to think about. Wow. Um, and I remember so about halfway through your guys' set. I, right, I know it's crazy that it's been over three years that we've known one another. But um, yeah. I remember seeing you live in Nashville the first time, and and I, you, I remember you actually looking at me, uh, and I had just kind of put my camera down, and we just locked eyes, and you had like this just passionate, intense look yeah. on your face live, and I was like, this woman is fantastic, and, uh, oh, and you just you know goodness. I just kind of carried on through my evening with photographs and stuff, and we kind of like had like a moment on stage, and it was before we ever even spoke, you know, and um, you know, here we are, you know, three years later talking, but. Um, I know it, it. Time moves so fast, but uh, oh. what well, I want to congratulate you on the videos for Spider Waves and the EP Struggle because oh, I well, I love you them. Like I think they're fantastic, and I want to talk to you. Uh, oh, I, I I I love them, and there's a lot of things I want to unpack as far as like symbolism and things. If if you want to get into that, um, the first time we spoke, we kind of talked about y- your heritage and and your your parents and your grandparents. And I believe in the video, and I think actually in both videos, you kind of play homage to your uh, your grandmother with the, um, the headdress. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right. Is it the Chichimaca? Am I saying that right or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're saying yeah, Chichimaca. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yes, like my, my Spanish is, is, is terrible, so I, I apologize if I butchered that. Nah, um, c- nah. Could you, uh, you give talk to me credit. a little bit about you know, paying homage to your grandparents in the videos? Yes, don't definitely. Oh, you, it was completely inspired off of basically this internal, uh, what do you call it? The, the fight between the voice that on the left side of my brain that says, okay, you lived your young life in Denver as a Latina with light skin. People automatically would confuse me as either European or something that was never related to my actual heritage, which is a Mexicana. And that really, that really confused me when I was little to a point where I felt like I was, and this is Denver, you know, right? This is like a first world city, et cetera, et cetera, supposedly progressive. But this was back in the 90s, you know, I don't know how it's now. And, and, and so I was, in a way, I feel so embarrassed to say this, but I was, I felt ashamed of my roots. I, 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 I was living a lie. I would lie to my friends at school or quote unquote friends, because I was just trying to be white and, 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 and between, you know, quote unquote white. And I'd lie to them and tell them my, my, that my father's name was Mark and that my mom was Nancy, even though my father's name was Roberto Cesario and my mother was Maria Teresa. And, um, and, and I realized that to this day, I am more proud than ever of my roots, the complete opposite of my, how, how I was when I was a little kid. When I was five years old, I was so embarrassed speaking Spanish in front of white people. And now it's like, for example, the, the most of our crew here, were, I mean, we're all from all different types of places. But we're all in our own way paying tribute to our own heritage by being proud of, of where our roots are from. And the only way that I could do it in, a, in an artistic way to, you know, to find closure within myself is to incorporate it in the band. You know, what other way am I going to do it? So, so I thought that visually speaking, this, the, 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 the cloth was inspired, the design was inspired off my mother's, my grandmother's my roots, which was also a reason that I felt like when I was little, I turned my back behind them. And I apologize to her. It's my apology and my, and my, my hopefully redemption. Well, 
Well, I, I think you capture that in uh, you, you mentioned obviously you kind of you know capturing your heritage or you know kind of shying away from it as a youth, and it it made me think of uh, there's a line in a, in a Rollins band song about uh, looking out the window trying to find my heritage, and I, I kind of picture uh, you as as a, as a youth or an adolescent, you know, kind of being in that in that room boxed in looking out the window trying to search for that and i feel that you know oh, yeah. in, in the, the few years that i've known you i feel that you've just really have come into your own as as a person and as a musician and i love watching the, the transformation uh, of you as oh, an artist thank you thank you so much thank you oh i'm, I'm getting all red now <laughs> oh. Oh, oh I don't see, know. yeah, I, I, I don't. Am I the only one that makes you blush during interviews? I, I feel that we, you know, I, I always make you blush, and I, it's never my intention. I just have a, a great admiration for you as a person. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, in you. the video struggle, there's there's some symbolism there, and if you want to talk about it, it's, um, I, I would like to uh, to get into it. There's um there's a part when that video starts out out. There's there's a woman kind of in, in this uh, desolate um, field, and and there's people kind of you know running and kind of chasing. Um, in her, and then you know, it kind of cuts away to a point where there's a picture of you, and, and you're in the, uh, you know, in in the outfit with the headdress and everything, and there's a, a woman kind of whispering in your ear. Is that kind of like your alter ego in the video and your internal struggle that we kind of alluded to earlier? Whoa! Oh my gosh! I don't want to. I don't. I mean, honestly, you know what? What you say there is really pretty, really beautiful. I I love your interpretation, and 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 and. And that's the thing that, because I, I, I honestly, I lost my pers- my personal perspective of the interpretation because it, once you release it, and first of all, it stops being yours, of course, right? And, and, and it stops being the band. And the great thing is that this was a completely collaborative right. visual project because the director, he, I completely gave him the freedom to go ahead and, 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 and let his, his interpretation take place of what the song inspired within him. I just gave him a little little ideas of, of my personal inspirations, which is the, the, the movie, The Perfume, well, based on the book, The Perfume, and, and, and basically on, you know, <laughs> the, the, the pure madness that at the end of the movie, he, I want to spoil, spoilers, everyone, spoilers. Okay, so at the end of the, of the movie, he gets eaten alive, you know, because he doused himself in, in the smell <laughs> of, the, of the women that he murdered. So I thought that was very dark. But in this way, I think... For, for me, for me, and, and I really liked your interpretation as well because that, that that all those characters are away different versions of the self. Like even the people that are eating me at the end, oh, or like rah, 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 oh, or, or killing me or, or whatever is going on there, like the black hole. That, that that those are for me. What it was personally for the it came that that was really cool. That it, 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 it was able to flow from the band to him to the crew, which was great working with them. The assistant director. It was good. one of the first times where we actually had assistant direct. We never had that before for a music video, so it was really cool to also on a, on a, on a technical mm-hmm. side be able to see people working with with a with the red camera, red camera. I didn't even know about that. That was like a really nice camera. I think that was, but that one was used for spyware. But um, but yeah, this the the symbology. I think definitely things with symbology. I mean, that's the the intention. But I, I, I guess to the video, it was kind of breaking down and trying to get what into you your there. Um, I want to see what you see. But you know, which which I love doing. But uh, next, also <laughs> on the CPU, you, you did you did something a, a little bit different this time than I think what mm-hmm. most people do. And you kind of different versions of the song with uh, uh, J. Uh, Harrison, the Talking Heads. Can you talk to me about kind of being one of the uh, the guitar parts for oh, one of the versions. Oh, cool! That was very, very fluid. It came about, um, and and and, it, and and I think it was really yeah. language. That, for example, since I'm not a studied music, she was able to have with Alejandra. So she 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 came from from MI from the school. She graduated and everything, and so to have the that language with him. Plus me learning from that. I, I'm really used to being around musicians that 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 talk in their tongue, but not in between drummer and producer. And, and then she comes from a person's side in her own in her in, in her own code to see them be able to the idea across from my original demos and um and and, and working with them is just freedom right. i sent him i think 30 33 extra demos as i found i was skimming through my computer wow. i was like no shoot i should have sent him these ones and and and, and i thought he was going to get kind of kind of mad because i did it one day before going out to see him but he was cool with it we just added some extra time to her to her schedule to just listen, you know, listen through all the songs and take notations. So he's very patient. He's 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 well, he's fucking he's Jerry Harris. I mean, Jerry Harrison. He's amazing. 
and but and, and, and awesome. I really love and, all the work, work he does with Violet Femmes. You know, one of my favorite bands yeah. too. Oh yeah, I I I I love uh, the Violent Femmes and Talking Heads too. I I think are one of those bands that Ooh. I think people kind of forget about their impact musically um, through the through the, the you know late seventies into the eighties and, and the early part of the nineties. But uh, is he also? I, I know you guys are working on a full length right now. Um, is he going to be working on the full length record as well, or is that already done and you're waiting for waiting for release? Oh yeah, exactly. We're just waiting for for to be able to release it. Um. And, and and it's interesting because you know you have that there, and then all of a sudden you're like that little that little antenna starts getting uh, electric electric again, you know. Like it, so right. now we're, you know we're now if we're all in LA, we like to go and, and and close ourselves off and still continue to write. So there's new material before this new material, but I don't want to confuse things up. <laughs> so yeah, this this the record's all right. done. We're just waiting to release it. <laughs> Uh, okay. Now, um, do you have a working title, or can you not say right now what the working title is? There's a there's a bunch of ideas I have listed, right, written down in my journal. So I'm just probably going to play Russian roulette and just see which which what that what comes up on the dice because I, I know for sure that I wanted to start with the letter B. I guess it's okay. I don't know why. I guess in the in the shower I was you know I was having a little bit of a, of a nervous uh, anxiety attack and and the letter B just kept popping up. I, I don't know why. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm thinking, you know, like you mentioned Russian roulette style as far as naming the title. I was, I was thinking maybe you could, you and the band can, can get together one evening and, uh, and, you know, play some darts and have some drinks and hang up all the names on a dartboard and just, Whoa. you know, see which one gets hit the most during a dart game and go with that, you know? Yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> I like the danger to it, too. You know, imagine one of us accidentally really seriously injures one another with it. We can put, put, <laughs> put that story to the album, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'll bring I'll bring safety goggles and a camera. We'll we'll do it when yeah. you're in Nashville here. And uh... but hey, it'll be your fault. <laughs> it'll be your fault because it was <laughs> yeah, blame it. That's all right. You can blame it on me. It's fine. Uh, you probably yeah. I'm I'm really accident prone. I, I'm very accident prone, no. so you probably don't want to be around me throwing sharp objects or anything. No so. way. Really, you get into a lot of accidents. Like, did you ever break a leg? Oh. Oh yeah, I, I, I've I've never broken a leg, but I, I've broken my neck. Okay. Um, oh, I have broken God. bones in my I hand. My... Um, oh yeah, I don't, I don't think we've ever. Oh, I don't think we. Yeah, we've never gone over my uh, my my broken neck story. People who listen to the show are like, "Oh, go here we go again." Ryan's broken neck story. That's we'll, we'll save that for for afterwards. If if you want to hear the story, I'll be more than happy to share it yeah, with you. Of um, as far as yeah, my uh, my my crazy. Um, my, my crazy racing days in the snow. That's that's a whole other. Uh, that's a whole other. That's a whole other show in itself, right there. No. Uh, <laughs> okay. did, did you go to Aspen? Uh, no, no. I I wish I wish that uh, it, it was in Aspen. Um, no, it actually uh, it took. Pl- <laughs> I, I wish it, it would be a lot cooler if it took place there. But no, it, it, it did not, unfortunately. Yeah, man. Well, that, that's. I mean, in a way, at least it wasn't in Colorado. Yeah, no, it wasn't in Colorado. Um, you know, it actually took place in my home state of Ohio, actually. So. Damn, in, in your home state of Ohio? Wow. Yeah. At least it was in your home state, right? In a way, you know, pay tribute to it. No, no, the, the pain. <laughs> right. No, you, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Sacrifice well, the pain for, for, your, for your land. Yeah, exactly. I always tell people it's probably one of the greatest things that happened happened to me, even though it was probably also one of the most terrible things that happened to me too, uh, for a lot of reasons. But uh, getting back to the 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 music side of things uh, on this tour, um, are you kind of having fun now? You know, obviously you you guys have a pretty the the catalog is growing musically with these opening sets. Are you having fun kind of tinkering with the set list a little bit and you know having fun with uh, you know playing some of these new songs live? Yeah, definitely. No, it's been such a such a relief. Also, for example, that, that I've been such a long time fan of Marfred because he's played in such bands as Lex Marquis and At the Mask. And the first time I saw him play bass, like I was just completely hypnotized. I couldn't stop staring at how how easy he just been seamless and and also keeping the groove with you know with his with with the instrument that is also his body. And so I knew that day on that I wanted to do something with him. And and so having him be in the band to this in this day having his addition really gives us the freedom to play other songs on the set so it was good to change it up a bit play some songs we never ever even played before and um and, and yeah just it's good that that 
because I remember when I was 17 and we started and, you know, there was like my set was, it was like five songs long and then when people would be like otra, otra, I'd be like oh that's about it okay we can just replay some songs so now it's nice to know that hey 10 years of hard work pays off now we could do very set list so that's, that's something that, that I've realized that, that, that feels really good I'm sure does it also, you know, t- t- just to also, you know, provide a different take, uh, you know, so every show is a little bit different as well for everybody that attends, or, you know, for the show in yeah. Brooklyn or the show in Cleveland are not the same show. It's, it's a little different and it's a little unique, yeah. but uh, do you have a, do you have a preference? Do you enjoy playing guitar or keyboard more? Ooh, oh my, I guess I like writing on keyboard more, but on stage, I really like uh, playing the guitar more. I don't know. I think maybe... I, I guess it depends. I guess I like doing both at the same time a lot because it's kind of like a, also with with adding delay effects with my with the pedals at the same time. Like it's a nice brain exercise. Right, right. I, I was I was curious about that. I'm glad you mentioned about writing on the keyboard because I, I kind of picture you doing most of your writing on the keyboard. Was that something that um that kind of, is it come more naturally to you to write on the keyboard as a W you know setting and playing guitar? Ooh, I, I think quite the opposite. I think maybe I like the keyboard more because it's harder for me. Because with the guitar, since the, I'm, I'm not really okay. a guitarist, I kind of made a cheat that that I can just pick up a guitar and tune it to my way and just kind of play some power chords. So at least that's easier for me to just kind of set down the, the the overall bass, even though I might not, I not might not ever use what we use, you know, with the, like the scratch guitar idea. So that definitely helps, you know, to try to use an instrument that I'm not... 100% good with. <laughs> so, for example, a friend of mine had this really cool <laughs> instrument. Uh, like I don't even know the name of it. Like That's how freaking cool it was. Uh, the name was, I think, like Hungarian or something. It's like this nice type oud type one-stringed instrument where you kind of, like a, a violin inspired, you have a little uh, wand to go over the string. And, and I have nothing, I have I, I, I had no clue about it, but it was cool to be like, able to play around with that instrument for hours on end. So I guess it's just, wow, okay. if you feel comfortable, you feel comfortable, right? Or not. Right. I guess it's yeah, no, I, I'm right there with you. Yeah. Oh, I, hey, I, 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 I dig it for coffee. sure. Um, as, I, <laughs> as I mentioned earlier, my my, uh, my son had some questions for you for the back end of the end of the interview here. And I'm kind of doing this a little bit um, as we continue doing the show. So he had some questions for you. I'm going to go over them now. Are you, are you ready for these ones? These are the hard-hitting yeah. questions right here. This is the meat of the interview right here, Jerry. <laughs> now, uh, my, my son Griffin, he wanted to know, one, first off, he's like, I have to know what her favorite color is. Honestly? Can I be honest? Yeah, of course. Oh, of course, yes. <laughs> All right, my favorite color is red. Favorite color is red. Okay. He also wanted to know what your I favorite know. snack was. I wanted to say blue, but I can't lie. I wanted to be different. You know, I want to be a rebel. I'm like, wow, oh, my favorite color. No, but it's red. <laughs> I love it so much. I could wear it every single day. And then what was the next one? I'm sorry. Well, red looks good on you, and that's you know, uh, uh, he, he wants to know what your uh, your favorite snack is. Ooh, okay, so back in the day when I was eight years old, my favorite snack, it's, it's not healthy at all. It was completely full of sugar. Uh, the fruit roll-up, fruit roll-up. But now my one of my favorite okay, snacks right. is one of those the split pea, the dry split pea chips that, that they sell in, like in those health stores. What do you call them? Those, like just dry split pea snack. It's really delicious. You know, it's it's funny how uh, your taste changed from you know from a kid at eight to you know an adult with being sensible and you know caring about yourself. You're like, give me fruit roll ups and gummy bears at eight eight to ten, and then when you get into your I don't know how old you are, you know, I, I'm almost forty, so you know, you're like, yeah, let's let's do the the health food chips that you would never even consider, you know, back then, you know, it's always good yeah. stuff. <laughs> oh, it's so crazy how we change. We're like different people in one lifetime. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 really awesome. I appreciate you uh, going through some of the uh, the Griffin uh, the Griffin questions here at the back end of the interview. Oh, I, love um, it. I, don't know, I was actually curious about he had mentioned, it, which is the uh, the last one. And he wanted to know what was your favorite thing about riding in your tour bus. Oh, 
I guess I just really like the hanging out in the in the lounge area because sometimes when you're in the middle of a tour and you're always hectic running one place to another and just being able to sit in a in a place that resembles in a, a house or an apartment that really that really helped us helps socialize you know sometimes you can be an introvert and hide yourself in your mind but the but the bus lounge area really supports the I guess the the festive energy the 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 maintenance of keeping a positive and healthy attitude, as they say. Fantastic. I, I love the answer. Uh, well, Terry, I, that's, yeah, that's pretty you. much all I have for you today. I mean, is there anything you want to you want to talk about or you want to mention here? Why have you? Well, I'm just. I just hope we keep going, going on and on and on, and keep playing around the, the, the states, so that way, you know, we'll be able to uh, hopefully not hurt you with dirt but eat some ice cream. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, definitely. I, I think we should definitely get together when you come through. Um, I, I would love to just, you know, sit and just, you know, pick your brain and talk with you. One of my favorite all-time yeah. guests, and that's no joke. Uh, I oh, really, really enjoy you. um, your company. Hopefully you had a good, a nice chat before we covered. Um, okay. I feel like we always do. Yeah, we'll be in the flight.